If you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. It's been one of the most profound journeys. I'm just going to get right into it. Um, you know, lithium. Uh, yesterday, the psychiatrists were calling out to study the lithium levels and under the guise of protection and peace once again this is the same thing they did in Nazi Germany and the reason that these citizens didn't realize what was upon them until it happened that's why they were not armed that's why they were so placated placated because they were all doped up variants um, at that time we know from the evidence that Bolshevik Russia as a whole was using massive amounts of carbohydrate balances to keep their populace in check bread lines and and uh, soup kitchens and things like that that was instrumental in in uh, doping up a citizen's re by the use of soma theory itself um, the m medicines that they use uh, Ativan and Xanax and, um, all of these pain medications they work by impeding the metabolism of the human body and so on the on the sheets themselves they say look this jacks up your sugar your sugar is going to go out of control you need to be monitored for diabetes well everybody thinks that they're quote catching diabetes but it's another form of production after you consume the original uh, prescriptions and that's exactly what prescription means it means to write you before you are they've already dictated what's going to happen to you based on whatever medication you are prescribed or you're um, subscribing to by accepting these things and so often you know then the blame goes on the individual consuming these medicines put out by the action of psychiatry which is another form of psychological warfare as that human being is just being bombarded from all sides this is a war those are war tactics everybody they wonder why we had to walk this process of the public law. We're in a war. And those that are perpetrating war upon humanity must, 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 and shall be held accountable for these things. There's, there was never, ever, ever any other option. If you've got an enemy that's attacking you, you do not go to the enemy and say, please, please attack me in a better manner. Please, please do what you're going to do in a more soft cell way so I don't feel it. Give me your drugs because then, you know, I don't have to feel any of this onslaught. We've, we've got to uh, absolutely and without a doubt dissent. You've got to stop patronizing something that's killing you. You're calling it your father. Something wrong here with the level of medication use. And there's something very, 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 very horrifyingly wrong here that 42 females are dying every day due to quote prescription overdose well, an overdose is just this medication that's killing somebody being t consumed at a greater rate okay if it can kill you it should not be up for consumption in the first place
in nature and in, in biology if we're out grazing or we're out eating and, and we have none of this knowledge perpetrated to us or upon us by the psychiatrist your grazers just like any deer deer walk along and they taste something and then they walk along a little bit further and taste something they don't eat it in clumps brought to you by the food pyramid and the reason they're grazing is because they're ma making sure that they're not going to eat something that makes them sick now, medications that have quote side effects are making you ill those that th that is a poison that's making you sick through the action of psychiatry you've been convinced and taught to consume these things this is how they depopulate it's not their fault if you're eating it because it says on the little piece of paper they gave you that it has those effects it says that it's a chemical it's a poison and the effects of consuming the poison cause this 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 or this to occur one of the most profound was years ago when I was still consuming television programming there was a commercial for Emetrex a, a uh, prescription for migraines it said one of the side effects is tuberculosis hello And in other prescriptions, it's just the side effects is death. It causes lung depression. Okay, so it says right there that it's a poison that slowly kills you through a span of time, comfortably. And if you take it, they have clean hands because that's you committing suicide. They said in the insert that it will slowly poison you. It's a poison. It makes you sick. These things cannot be consumed any longer. These things, this has to stop. You are, are consuming things that are killing you. Beings, you're, you're killing life. You're not some object or a human resource. You are human life. You are biology. And you're consuming things that are killing you. And allowing things to occur that are killing you. <laughs> in, in the action of suicide. Because they're telling you it's killing you. You don't want to read anything because they also taught you human ease. And, and I've heard this, I, I can't count how many times. The um, student that comes in and, and into my classrooms and I'll, I'll go through a day of, you know, teaching whatever because somebody else has asked a question and I've answered the question and somebody will come in and say, it'll take me two years to read all that okay it's been 15 years that I've been doing this and it took me till this point in time to realize what I realized so it, it was never an option for me to say well that's just too much to read <laughs> because because there's always been human beings lives at risk Yeah, the first instance of when I realized this is a eugenics program, the United States of America, that chain of events, the style, a perpetual union is a eugenics program. It is human husbandry. It is farming. And, and when we've got the uh, conscious farm animals 
that are consuming poison, which, you know, you can't get a cow to eat poison. You can eat, you know, you can't get a horse to eat poison that often unless it's, like, bad hay or whatever. You know, and no other biology eats poison. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't consume prescription medications. It doesn't buy from the psychiatrist or the attorney selling it concepts of law. No other biology does this. And, you know, somebody went off on me a while back and said, you know, take that back, I'm not an animal. You're codified under 7 U.S.C., United States Code, under agriculture, and classified as animals. And you're offended when I speak this truth to you, but you're not offended when your government is killing you farm animals. There's something wrong with that. I I'm trying to save your life while they're, they're acting under actions of peace and agreements with each other, compacts and agreements, treaties, to slaughter you in a very soft way where it just feels so good, which is what exactly what Aldous Huxley said would happen. He said, within another generation, crap, we'll have everybody eating out of their our, our hands and they'll, they'll just love their servitude. They're going to love their servitude. It's it's soma theory. You you have got to wake up because this is this is something that's just so overwhelming to even witness on a day-to-day -day basis because you're still consuming these things. And the quote from Aldous Huxley, quote, and it seems to me perfectly in the cards that there will be within the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda brainwashing or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods They said yesterday that they've been putting lithium in your water for a very long time now, studying it and you as human test subjects, and this is all in accordance with the FDA's contracts with the Ethics Commission. This is all in the contracts with the Ethics Commission, and you don't want to go there. You don't want to read that contract. It, it's like uh, a page and a half long. It's not a, a long contract at all. It, it uh, The last one was formulated in um, 2006, Rules of Procedure, English 2006. Oh, it says it's six pages. I'll just read the, uh, maybe until you get it. Rules of Procedure of the Freebird Ethics Commission International, or FECI, which means to kill the fee. F-E-E-C-I, it's always meant to kill the fee. It stems from the word side, kind of like polycide or genocide, democide. This is a revised version, 2006. Preamble. The Freeburg's, Freeburg Ethics Commission, International or Fiji, was founded in 1980 and is oriented on the United States Review Boards. Since its inception, Fiji has reviewed and provided expert opinions for clinical studies using human test subjects. 
After more than 25 years of existence, the Fiji has achieved a national and international reputation for professionalism. They're very, very, very expert at using you as human test subjects. And indeed, they've been called professional. I'll continue reading. The expert opinion prepared for a clinical study is based on the current editions of the, listen carefully folks, recommendations, this is only recommendations, of the Revised World Medical Association's Declaration of Helsinki. Listen very carefully here. The directives and guidelines of the European Union and the regulations, the regulations of the United States Food and Drug Administration. That means that Congress is making the law and their directors are following that policy. But it is Congress who is using all the world's populace as human test subjects. Additionally, the current laws and regulations in Germany and all other countries in which the clinical study is to be conducted are also an inherent part of this basis. Now, they entered into a treaty with Germany just after the war, of course, again and said, okay, we're going to take your German citizens as product, you take my citizens as product, and we'll see who comes out with a fatter pocketbook at the other side. They did this again, and again, and again. 1953, the Mutual Defense Treaty agreements between the Republic of Korea and the United States. It pledged human beings to each other. If you give me your citizens, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. If you give me your citizens, I'll give you a cut of the take. China Russia, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, France, Germany, Austria, Italy, Africa, Canada, United States Incorporated, Mexico, Brazil. There's not one place on this planet that is not touched, that is not touched by this confederacy in action. You can find all of this in the Bretton Woods Agreements. You can find all of this written at the International Monetary Fund. Look at its members. There's not one place now not touched by the psychiatrist or by the attorney that has not invaded or been invaded as a country of, quote, heathens, to quote from their original charters in the 1600s. They were promoting this religious indoctrination called Christianity. Jesus hated mainstream religion, a religious construct. God is not a religion. Government is a religion. God is a trust. God is a knowledge of the self and a trust. God is not a fiduciary or a character of a trust.
You have entrusted your souls to something that is so horrifyingly wrong. And you've consumed all of its product. You've got to stop consuming from the tree of knowledge. Stop partaking of these concepts of religion, of government, of the nature of human. Uh, David Hume, he wrote your quote, nature, in the treatise on human nature. He wrote the design for this model of human that, that consumes all of these products. You are actually a state of being. They have formulated so many models. The politically correct model and the female model and the male model. and All of these things are all models. That, that, that is not you. Through consumptive behavior, you have become something else. You are acting as something else. These things are, are just horrifying to witness. Bad, bad. So if you want to find that, um, you can actually go to the Free Burr Ethic Commission that's written in German, so it's www.feki.com forward slash index dot php. Scroll down the page to the most current uh, rules of procedure, which is a revised version of 2006. So, these um, monsters, I guess, these things, the boogeyman, said to you that they're putting lithium in the water now. And that they happen because they're doing tests. Okay, I'm not going to speak on this further as to lithium, but please, by all means, go visit your table of elements and tell me if that occurs naturally or if the psychiatrist actually spoke a lie in the new lithium water test and suicide study over at news.uk.msn.com in order to sell you such concept. There is no, absolutely no reason that there would be lithium in your water supply. And we've got some news from the Baltimore Sun. Articles.baltimoresun.com Psychiatrists among those charged in Towson drug raid. Investigators said ecstasy was being manufactured at the home. An addiction rehabilitation psychiatrist with a history of treatment for alcohol and drug, drug abuse was among those charged Wednesday with manufacturing and distributing the drug ecstasy at a Townsend home. Now, ecstasy years ago was an anti-emetic and it would drown the human being because of its effects of water retention. It was made, quote, illegal and on the other side of course the pharmaceutical industry came in with the brand name of um, Imodium same thing lesser dose and this drug it uh, apparently the um, information on it I've never I would not consume this thing because of the knowledge of what it is, but um, it's, just, it's profound that not only is this used in um, uh, roofy type situations, 
but also the end result is of course the death related death and overdose of course is when the body builds up a tolerance for the low amounts that the human being would be consuming and it'll hit a uh, where the half-life is is made known I mean you've got so much stuff you can't metabolize it your body's starting to shut down because that's its function and ultimately um, you're, it's going to be seen as an overdose because your cells are consumed with this even if you're taking it in the amounts that are prescribed because its function is to impede the metabolism and I urge everybody who is not with knowledge to study such as the Krebs cycle of the metabolism itself, the citric acid cycle, when you can see the evidence of the um, actions upon you. This is foul. These things are creepy. These entities. Um, hmm. We did that one. I didn't do John Holdren yet. And Johnny Holdren. And right now, at this time, he used to sign SAR in the Obama administration. And uh, not a lot of people look back at, you know, well, yesterday, <laughs> according to the Gelnhausen Charter. Because you'll just forget this anyway, in just a few moments, because you've been trained to do that. But um, he was palling around with Ulrich, uh, the uh, population bomb, and just after that they wrote a compendium, which was Population Matters, and that's like one of the sickest books I've ever read in my life. And Johnny Holdren also wrote Echo Science. And in his book, he calls out for the eugenics, for depopulation, for population control. And in this, he's also requesting that perhaps um, birth control can be placed within the um, water as well. So it, it is not at all doubtful that there is birth control in the water that is being consumed because they said they were going to do it back in the 60s. That was the same thing that Henry Kissinger said in the 70s, except for he said, okay, everybody, we've got to ramp it up. We're not getting rid of people fast enough with abortion rights. We're not getting rid of people fast enough with you know, uh, teaching them through Planned Parenthood to kill themselves and each other. We need to ramp it up. And that was Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council. From page 83, or 837, from Johnny Holdren's book, A Cold Science. And again, he's in this administration. He's a science advisor. Science are. It's quoted, indeed, it has been concluded that compulsory population control laws, even including laws requiring compulsory abortion, could be sustained under the existing construct constitution if the population crisis became sufficiently severe to endanger the society. What the heck is a population crisis? Now, as a human being, I don't consider my race, the human race, to be a crisis or a problem or a detriment to myself. However, the 1947 National Security Act, which was an act of Congress, so the national security was the main objective. Not the security of human beings, not state security. National security. 
Kissinger's Memorandum 200 said, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Let me tell you how to call the populace. Okay, we got to put more women in school and teach them not to like themselves, not to like their children, you know, just do whatever. Got to educate those females. So that is an action of hearts and minds. Now, from page 786, we've already witnessed the realization of this one. Quote, one way to carry out this disapproval might be to insist that all illegitimate babies be put up for adoption, especially those born to minors who generally are not capable of caring properly for a child alone. If a single mother really wished to keep her baby, she might be obliged to go through the adoption proceedings and demonstrate her ability to support and care for it. Adoption proceedings probably should remain more difficult for single people than for married than for married couples. In recognition of the relative difficulty of raising children alone, it would even be possible to require pregnant single women to marry or have abortions, perhaps as an alternative to placement for adoption, depending on the society. It depends on what you're going to buy. If you can be taught to dehumanize each other, the business schematic just works really well. Because you'll buy all of this. You'll buy that a child, a baby, can ever be a burden on any life, anywhere. A child, it is not possible for a child to be a burden on life anywhere. That is the function of all biology is to maintain its race. And if you buy that there can be any such thing as a single mother being a burden or a child being a burden, it allows you to maintain under the action of genocide quietly. If the psychiatrist can convince you that you are more important than your fellow human being or that your fellow human being is more important than you, or better yet, that national security, which maintains the corporations, are more important than you. I've witnessed firsthand that names have been maintained as more important than human beings. Names. These things are just, um, page 787 8. And, and again, I'm reading quotes from Johnny Holdren's Echo Science. <clears throat> Quote Adding a sterilant to drinking water or stable foods is a suggestion that seems to horrify people more than most proposals for involuntary fertility control. Indeed, this will pose some very difficult political, legal, and social questions to say nothing of the technical problems. No such sterilant exists today, nor does one appear to be under development. To be acceptable, such a substance would have to meet some rather stiff requirements. It must be uniformly effective despite widely varying doses received by individuals, and despite varying degrees of fertility and sensitivity among individuals, it must be free of dangerous or unpleasant side effects, and it must have no effect on members of the opposite sex, children, old people, pets, or livestock. Dangerous or unpleasant side effects. We've got human beings 
slaughtered every day by birth control and these blood clots and all of these things that are breaking loose and puncturing things and it's sterilizing the population on quote accident when it's on purpose they didn't accidentally remove your ovaries they didn't accidentally facilitate a hysterectomy they didn't accidentally tell you you needed one they didn't accidentally control and manipulate the inflation rate through the IMF to perpetrate to you or purport to you so you could take up in the mind that financially you just can't afford to have children that wasn't an accident that's farming it's not an accident that 35,000 males males in the United States incorporated alone 55,000 in India alone per year are quote committing suicide they only need a few studs on the farm feminism has wrapped around all of the females and children in order to prey on us education itself pedagogy stems from the word meaning education or attendance on boys this thing is slaughtering us globally and teaching you not to stand up it's teaching you to be a really good farm animal going down the kill shoot you are driven you are being driven into the kill shoot if you do not change your path stop patronizing it page 786-7 involuntary fertility control a program of sterilizing women after their second or third child despite the relatively greater difficulty of their operation than vas vasectomy might be easier to implement than trying to sterilize men yeah you can't really get one over on the male not as much as you can sell to the female who's very impulsive and we've witnessed this forever you have to surround the male with eight nine twenty agents in unison in order to hold him down and now there's an even playing field that you've lost your funding you're about to learn very 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 hard lesson I'll continue reading the development of long-term sterilizing capsule that could be implanted under the skin and removed when pregnancy is desired opens additional possibilities for coercive fertility control of course that is Depravera that is also um, the uh, there was another one that was implanted in the arm that worked the same way actually had capsules in it my sister-in-law it was, it was amazing years ago because my sister-in-law was on that uh, thing implanted in her arm well when she went and got it she was actually in her teens and so she qualified for such as Medicaid whatever so they implanted it but they wouldn't take it out with the same insurance she she had that insurance later and they would not take it out and of course looking back now that is what Kissinger also said in the 1974 memorandum 200 and, and of course his depopulation program the uh, Department of Health and Human Services under the um, auspices of the Office of Population Affairs 
That's what its purpose is. It says the capsule could be implanted at puberty and might be removable with official permission for a limited number of births. Now, after she could afford to have that removed, she got pregnant with my nephew, Dusty. And for the new listeners, Dustin was murdered by the medical industry when a MD came in and played dumbass. She was in labor. This um, doctor, uh, I can't even remember his name tonight, Edward Lane in Prosser, Washington. He's still, still delivering babies. And he came in there and he was forcing her to go through the labor, although the baby wouldn't fit through the birth canal. Well, later on, after uh, Dustin was born, lack of oxygen, and lived for three years only, in that span of time, it was evidence that Ed Lane was not qualified to facilitate such as a C-section although he never called anybody to come. Well, the directive was that Dustin was to be killed. And nobody was ever held accountable other than financially when they sued them and their insurance came in to uh, cover the lost productivity of Dustin. It was later after that that I realized that he was still practicing. As I lived in that area later with my uh, youngest, when I was pregnant with my youngest, and I bumped into him at the medical practice. And he asked me if he, if I would like to enjoy his services once again, because my oldest was uh, born in Prosser. And of course, I looked at him and I said, I am Dustin's aunt. And after that, the conversation was over. It's, it's just massive slaughter. Massive slaughter. We need to start getting rid of these predators if we are going to survive. Page 838, the kind of people who cause social deterioration can be compelled not to have children. Quote, if some individuals contribute to general social deterioration by overproducing children, and if the need is compelling, they can be required by law to exercise reproductive responsibility, just as they can be required to exercise responsibility in their resource consumption patterns, providing they are not denied equal protection. You are all the same animal on a farm equally, so you all get the same treatment, okay? Page 838, nothing is wrong or illegal about the government dictating family size. In today's world, however, the number of children in a family is a matter of profound public concern. The law regulates other highly personal matters. For example, no one may lawfully have more than one spouse at a time. Why should the law not be able to prevent a person from having more than two children? Now remember, this is that soft, soft, snuggly teddy bear sitting in the White House administration, Johnny Holdren speaking about his vision of the future through his proposed eugenics plan under the title Ecoscience or Science of the Home. Page 942-3, a planetary regime should control the global economy and dictate by force the number of children allowed to be born. 
When the media comes out and says that more female children have been murdered, more male children have been murdered in China or India or some other place recognizing religious construct or whatever, the religion did not create the law. Congress did. Congress said in China we're going to kill children if they're born and the Chinese are having too many children. They said the same thing in Bangladesh and in Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan. And you can find the formulation of policy by going to Bono's Entertainment I've read through uh, one of the uh, most recent writings by Rebecca Cook. Those are entitled uh, What You Didn't Want to Know About the Depopulation Agenda, Part 1 and 2. Bono's Entertainment on YouTube. Quote, toward a planetary regime, perhaps those agencies combined with UNEP and the United Nations population agencies might eventually be developed into a planetary regime sort of an international super agency for population resources and environment such a comprehensive planetary regime could control the development administration conservation and distribution of all natural resources renewable or non-renewable at least in so far as international implications exist. Thus, the regime could have the power to control pollution, not only in the atmosphere and the oceans, but also in such freshwater bodies as rivers and lakes that cross international boundaries or that discharge into the oceans. The regime might also be a logical central agency for regulating all international trade, perhaps including assistance from DCs to the LDCs and including all food on the international market. The planetary regime might be given responsibility for determining the optimum population for the world and for each region and for arbitrating various countries' shares within their regional limits. Control of population size might remain the responsibility of each government, but the regime should have the power to enforce the agreed limits. Page 917. We will surrender. We will need to surrender national sovereignty to an armed international police force. Everybody remembers Obama came in just a couple years ago and gave Interpol full-on international jurisdiction. Quote, if this could be accomplished, security might be provided by an armed international organization a global analog of a police force. Many people have recognized this as a goal, but the way to reach it remains obscure in a world where factionalism seems, if anything, to be increasing. The first step necessarily involves partial surrender of sovereignty to an international organization. That had already been done. Congress, who is the father of the United Nations, created the United Nations, and that's just a follow-through. We just need to put more uh, arms of it in there and we'll have a great deal says Johnny Holdren page 749 pro family and full pro birth attitudes are caused by ethnic chauvinism quote another related issue that seems to encourage a protagonist attitude in many people is a question of the differential reproduction of social or ethnic groups Many people seem to be possessed by fear that their group may be outbred by the other groups. White Americans and South Africans are worried there will be too many blacks and vice versa. The Jews in Israel are disturbed by the high birth rates of Israeli uh, Arabs. Protestants are worried about Catholics and Ibos about Hasses. 
Obviously, if everyone tries to outbreed everyone else, the result will be uh, catastrophe for all. This is another case of the tragedy of the commons, where in the commons is the planet Earth. Fortunately, it, it appears that, at least in the DCs, virtually all groups are exercising reproductive restraint. These are the same folks that through the action of psychiatry taught you to be those groups in the first place. You do not compete in your biological state. Somebody has to teach you that you're different. Somebody has to teach you that you're naked. And then sells you the clothes and goes right back to psychiatry. Johnny Holdren has been calling the shots for a very long time along with his little buddies. Back then, and a little bit later, it was, of course, such as Teddy Stevens, Joseph Biden, Patrick Leahy. They're all in the little same buddy-buddy group. The Crimes Against Children Act is a privacy law to protect the real pedophiles. It was drafted and written by Patrick Leahy. And the Violence Against Women Act is a whole bunch of war tactics written by Joseph Biden under the actions of fourth generation warfare. And it's also inclusive being a privacy law so that they can traffic women and children. They sell the sheep or so many other things. It's it's absolutely horrifying, disgusting. Page 944. As of 1977, we are facing a global overpopulation catastrophe that must be resolved at all costs by the year 2000. Quote, humanity cannot afford to muddle through the rest of the 20th century. The risks are too great and the stakes are too high. This may be the last opportunity to choose our own and our descendants' destiny. Failure to choose or making the wrong choices may lead to catastrophe, but it must never be forgotten that the right choices could lead to a much better world. Quote, this may be the last opportunity to choose our own and our descendants' destiny. This is a psychopath sitting in the White House now. They're still chumming around with politicians way back when. Saying in writing, in front of your eyes, in a book called Echo Science, that they would like to secure their race and ensure that their descendants have everything that they need. And that you humanity, human beings, are overpopulating this place. And once again, call out for your deaths right in front of your eyes. Right in front of your eyes. These things are, are, are right there. Everything's written. Johnny Holdren is bad. Bad, bad, bad. I mean, Population Matters. That book, it made me ill. They're so horrifying. They were betting on your productive behavior when various forces are employed, which is the action of fourth generation warfare. These these things are not. Um, that's not relative to your nature. That is not relative in any stretch of the imagination anywhere. Anywhere. that It's not uh, conducive to human life. It's insane. This is insane. That, that this can be tolerated for any amount of time. And this has been happening since the 60s this time. They ramped it up in the 70s. I know we're coming up on break. 
when we get back, we'll cover um, some news and things of interest, and I'll get off of my rant. I've just been, today was very, very interesting. Just like every other day, every day is full of these revelations and experiences. And um, it's been something else, something else to witness and, and walk through, but it's, um, I see nothing but good coming out of it. I see humanity waking up. I see so many things. The dragon with his tail caught in the teeth of itself. From kdvr.com, poor tweet by federal lender prompts backlash. It says, if this is you, then you better fill out your FAFSA, FAFSA.gov. I think it might be an advertisement for social media managers reaching young audience with irreverent memes and tweets is a dangerous endeavor. The latest entity to end up with egg on its face is the federal student aid office which on Tuesday tweeted an image that many readers felt mocked the poor. The image, a common meme derived from the 2011 comedy Bridesmaid, features Kristen Wiig's character pouting about being sent back to her coach seat after sneaking her way into... Ah, uh, this is just an advertisement. Um... <laughs> this thing, these advertisements are just ramping up. And, and the, the sick... You're altering my heading. You know, we didn't get to um, Iceland refusal to renew passport of girl family cults Harriet or anything um, during the last show either. I know that uh, I don't hear the break. Hmm. It's usually one. So I'll just keep on rolling, I guess. We already covered the Florida rep that arrested for DUI. We didn't cover from uh, DeseretNews.com. Ogden therapist ordered to stand trial in child sex abuse case. Uh, this came out, it looks like Thursday. Uh, Heber City, an Ogden therapist, has been ordered to stand trial on charges that he sexually molested two girls during a December 31st day at Wasser County Hotel. On Wednesday, Judge Stephen Hansen ruled that there was sufficient probable cause to bind over Brian P. Gomez for trial. Gomez, 40, is charged in 4th District Court with six counts of aggravated sex abuse of a child, a first degree felony. In a five-page ruling, Hansen noted that he is required by law to view the evidence presented at Gomez's June 18th preliminary hearing in the light most favorable to the prosecution. This is funny. Unless the evidence presented, quote, falls to a level of in inconsistency or incredibility that no reasonable jury w could accept it. Well, we'll see if he's going to play attorney work product doctrine or not. It sounds like he's heading into the right direction using evidence. And uh, the word would be, unless the evidence is impeached, which means that you would have to uh, deny that it exists. If there's evidence of rape, it has to be overcome by evidence that that evidence never existed to be impeached. Attorney Work Products Doctrine says, is there's evidence of rape? Get a child psychiatrist in there, diagnose a child as a whore, diagnose the other guy as innocent uh, victim of circumstance, put on a great big show, shovel the evidence off the court record because it wasn't timely or it wasn't in the right form, and we can get somebody off to uh, allow them to go out and abuse another child. That's called business. Hillary Clinton recently was outed for such business as a child predator. I 
kind of business is not the kind of business that I want to occur in my places. My house that has been so corrupted. Sick. Nasty, nasty. So they're fearmongering over in Iceland, it looks like. NBCnews.com. Iceland refuses to renew passport of girl family calls Harriet. Ten-year-old Icelandic girl has been denied a passport renewal because her name was not approved by authorities, according to media reports. British-born Tristan Cardu and his Icelandic wife are appealing against the decision that nearly stranded their daughter Harriet ahead of a family vacation, according to the Guardian newspaper. Icelandic law requires that children's names be approved by the National Registry or cleared by authorities. Cleared! They're saying they have to run that legal name through a clearinghouse. They're telling you that she has to have more than one name to identify her because they own the patents on those names and they are required to be discharging congressional bankruptcy through the clearinghouse process. So all of this controversy, which means with Trover, okay, picking up the treasure trove. They found it. They're saying, oh, you can't fly. You can't have a passport. Okay, you don't need to go anywhere right now. Deal with this from the outside. Okay, you, you don't need that vacation. Don't end up registering any child with the state to be used to discharge congressional bankruptcy. You don't need to fly. You can play later. Your obligation is to these children and not entering them into a holding corporation to be stuck. I think I've got Bo with me. Hey, Bo. Oh, yeah, hey there. How you doing? Oh, I'm here, so must be doing all right. Good to hear. What do you think about that one in Iceland? Oh, well, I mean, I wonder how many of the listeners actually uh, caught what you said. Let's back up just a moment here. They are saying that they have to run that name through the clearinghouse. Yes. Now, now, now write this down. The clearinghouse is where the Secretary of State clears the books. How do they do that? They do that through a mechanism that is uh, is uh, very much. Uh, I mean, it is. Yeah, it is is a form of uh, human trafficking, right? They've had it down to a mechanical process, like uh, machinery type precision, for quite some time. Uh, of course, they've had since 1929 to refine all of their uh, antics. But they're telling you right there, this is NBC, this is National Broadcasting Corporation, telling you that they have to have that name to clear their books to offset their congressional bankruptcy. And people want to cry and say that I'm not a farm animal. Right? Every day. Every day, they're, they're offended by the truth. And of course I'm going to be offensive. Until you hear me, I'm going to keep offending you. There, there's no other option. I, I cannot stand here, sit anywhere and watch you as, as lemmings being driven over that cliff by the Pied Piper. Okay, this, this couple, now they have a choice. Are they going to fight for a passport and end up registering their child? Or are they going to say, no, my child is more important than, than flying out for vacation for a couple weeks? Right. And, and maybe perhaps take the uh, harder path and hold to object to the assignment ability. Yes, hold them That's account. what my whole case was about. 
on holding them accountable instead of subscribing to it. Yeah, you might have to suffer and not be able to fly somewhere for a while. Uh, hopefully not much longer with um, the things that we see coming down the pipe here. So, you know, I, I know you want results like yesterday. That's I, what I got out of this thing, I did too. But uh, you got to hold on for the, for the long haul if you want the cure and not some stinking remedy that the federal state uh, slams down your throat as a beneficiary. Right. If you register, you can go on vacation for two weeks. You know, that's not selling you anything other than a right that was stolen from you by the same entity that's selling it to you again. Right. Now, somewhere along the line, you people out there need to realize these things and decide whether, okay, you want to be uh, a corporate product and continue to be their asset traded on the stock market, or you want to stop and say, hey, wait a minute. This isn't, uh, this isn't uh, the, uh, uh, the, the kind of reality that I was sold in, uh, as a youth in the public indoctrination system. Uh, it's a far cry from the world we were supposed to inherit here. And, and what's all, what, what, you know, what's this continual war mechanism? The uh, war against humanity in the form of the war on drugs and uh, the war on terrorism. Peace which has no end ever. It's peacekeeping. It was it was sold to you as a uh, from a snake oil salesman, or a bunch of snake snake oil salesmen. Yeah, I like how you've been bringing out the point that the word peace does not mean what the people have been sold either. No, it's a compact or agreement. Those are all the treaties. Peace That's why they all sound so check. nice. They yeah. tell you in Webster's Dictionary what peace means, and then <laughs> what they really mean by it, are these attorneys writing all these charters and things like that. I mean, the word peace is in all of them. Uh, Atlantic Charter. Uh, right. All of them because they're peacekeeping. It's a eugenics program. Farming. And then people want to say, well, you, you're not going to uh, get many followers if, if you can't be a little more uh, a politically, PR. Politically correct. I'm not politically correct. I don't want peace. I am not seeking peace. I do not contract with the criminal confederacy. I'm a human being. I'm not politically correct. I'm a being, a state of being that is absolutely in no way politically correct and if I offend your ego get over yourself get over yourself stop thinking about me 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 and think about the human beings that are being slaughtered in front of your very eyes and so the media is now calling attention to these things albeit in somewhat subtle manners, but they're giving you the full disclosure right in mainstream media. NBC News, ABC News, Fox News, that's CBS. What clean, that's what clean hands doctrine is. They're cleaning their hands. They're telling they are. you they're, that, it, you know, this is human trafficking. However, in Article 1, Section 9, Clause 4 of the Constitution, Congress came in and, and said to itself, it said, you know what, we won't, we won't use the human beings as prostitutes, no cap to capitalization, without enumeration. And that means without them vesting power in us. So they said, okay, we won't ever prostitute them unless they consent to being prostitutes. Right, there you go. And then what do you do? You go down and register and vote and get certificates and licenses and all this stuff. You know, this whole push for the uh, controversy now that they're cashing in over on the gay and lesbian marriage licenses is absolutely sickening. I could care less 
All right, if you want to be with somebody of the same sex, all right, well, as nature would have it, you're going to uh, not uh, be breeding anymore, so you'll eventually die off. But, I mean, you know, side issue is, why do you need permission from the federal state to do these things? And you're it's already... absolutely the same thing with, um, you know, uh, male-female relationships. Why do you got to go to the daddy state and have a third party in there? Well, the, the federal state wants you in there because they're going to cash in. You're prostitutes. You're consenting to prostitution. And there's force behind this. We know of this force. It's called Fourth Generation Warfare. And the uh, Insurance Portability Act, HIPAA, was another force. It, it impeded your kingdom. As gay and lesbians, it impeded your kingdom and said that you had to now be married in, in order to inherit or to have certain rights. But wait, Congress took those rights through the HIPAA Act. So you want to hold them accountable for HIPAA. That's, that's genocide. They're targeting a specific sect of the human population called gays and lesbians. That's called genocide. That is an act of war. And every time a politician gets up there and says, no, I don't want gay rights, and another politician says, yes, we want gay rights, that is promoting a civil war. That is not covered under cover hold insurance, hedge funds. To all of the investors out there, you have not been notified of these things. This is bank, bankruptcy, and securities fraud at the least end, and insurance fraud at the farthest end, or the farthest extension. Now, to all of you, insurers, hedge fund management, it's over. You, you either take your hand out now, or you get picked for the fall guy, which we're seeing now. Our hedge fund manager got nailed in Texas today. Again, and there's, there's just numerous accounts of, of uh, these things occurring. But you're hedging the wrong bet. Now over at Fox News, listening to the radio broadcast earlier today, they are outing the, the IRS with the scandal and the hearings going on in regards to the Lois Lerner emails that were lost and um, the uh, bullying tactics of the Tea Party and whatnot. And they're outing the IRS on Fox, you know, mainstream media news as a corrupt uh, criminal enterprise. Rico. A, a, yeah, a organization that is riddled with corruption is, I believe, uh, close to the terminology that they use. So they're telling you <laughs> some aspects about your government here. You're still calling it as such. Uh, the situation in Iraq. Uh, ISIS is moving in to take over town after town, according to the production. Of course, we know from the book four of uh, the uh, Church Committee detailed staff reports on foreign military intelligence, page 12, that it's all... Uh, Produced information. Okay. ISIS itself. Was another creation out of the National Security Act from 1947. Right. I mean, when are you guys going to start looking at this as it really is instead of uh, the way you've been uh, programmed to? You need to undo your programming. Unlearn that which you have learned. And so, anyways, uh, ISIS has taken over... According to the production, uh, town after town in Iraq, and uh, including uh, now the Syrian portions, and uh, they want to uh, create a new country is the alleged 
uh, motive of ISIS, and um, but the Kurds are are fighting back with one heck of a, a resistance there. So, uh, comments on that, Tammy? I I'm praying that the all the sheeple um, wake up because this is this is the time. You know, here we have the CIA working around the clock. It seems. Um, from the inside on the outside um, all at the same instance in, in time and, and everybody has to stop buying these concepts your brother is your brother is your brother is your brother it has nothing uh, humanity is nothing it, it, a character is a color or um, you know a, a status symbol is a, a fat pocketbook that does not stem from biology in any way, shape, or form. Well, now the, you know, the production uh, out of Hollywood on the CIA, say in terms of uh, Mission Impossible, okay, those those type of people really do exist, uh, and they've got all the the toys. Just like a Mission Impossible. Just like in Nazi Germany, it was the German Stasi. Right, but they're but they're not there preventing, uh, you know, they're not doing things like preventing uh, a nuclear war and saving the world and things like that. They're actually working, uh, you know, their magic to create the intelligence to promote the war on both sides. Absolutely, through the. Uh, mechanism of state security, which was the German Stasi. You're going to have national security. Okay, so you're going to have intelligence officers on the Kurdish side. You're going to have intelligence officers on the uh, ISIS side. Okay, and they may go under, under, under different names. Well, they surely go under different names to protect their identities. But uh, they're working for the same side over these two sides are pitting against one another right that's how it works yes and they need this mechanism because war is a racket and they are making money hand over fist on the demise of humanity and the people fall for it over and over and over again Due to all the intelligence working out there, including these, um, you know, countless hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, unspecified uh, job titles under the government payroll, that uh, these are a lot of these clowns you see out there that are um, creating consensus reality. You might know them as trolls and such on blogs and YouTube and all over the place they're everywhere and they do work in packs absolutely they work in uh, body politics they're called a body politic when they're in a group and we evidenced this the other day as uh, uh, why uh, as, you know s say uh, uh, you know, my uh, recent uh, bombardment by these stalkers on uh, YouTube. They don't like the fact that I'm pointing out the uh, acts of enablement uh, not being, uh, I mean, the acts of enablement as the corporate structure of the federal Confederacy, aka government, and they want to keep you sidelined and um, um, diverted over to some nonsense about a particular enablement act known as the Act of 1871. Okay, and the minions in the same league promoting their uh, view of the science, and this is a uh, controlled opposition, by the way. Uh, telling you things like how it's all, you know, due to HARP and, and you know, don't look at the fundings over at uh, Grants.gov or anything like that. No. 
No, this particular agent, he didn't want to argue any of the material facts or the uh, substance. He wanted to argue title. He wanted to defend his title and invoke my title. That's all. Which is the action of psychiatry. Yeah, they're psychiatrists. They usually have really smooth tongues. You know, lots of ratifying agents. Lots of ratifying agents who come over and thumb their uh, their 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 comments up uh, in this one instance seven times. Right. They have the function of Joseph Goebbels, uh, akin to Joseph Goebbels, and he was Hitler's propaganda minister. One of his quotes was, "If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth," and that is what consensus reality is. You know, hurriedly thumbing up a, a pose so that she will watch it in a, you know, a hurried manner or whatever other advertising gimmicks and schematics they have. Psychiatrists are at the back end of that. I mean, they have so many of them following them that, uh, you know, they could, you know, do a video about blowing their nose and they're going to have like uh, thousands of views within an hour. But these aren't real people. These are like the uh, situation you see with uh, Michelle Obama's uh, Twitter account. Like 80% of those accounts are uh, just, they're just dead accounts. They're just uh, uh, agent. Uh, All they do is like things on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and stuff or dislike things. Right. Right, and the reason they're there is because the federal government pays them to do this. And the economy is, 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 is uh, so bad that, uh, you know, people are willing to do anything to put food on their table, unfortunately. Right. But what does that actually mean? You know, you look at it, and, and the sad part is through the, the use of a useful idiot. Uh, these things can occur, and, and when we went looking for these uh, revenue streams, we found a lot of them in the municipality and in uh, retirement assets or disability assets that are set aside and and used for that purpose. So these these individuals are are being paid very very little amounts of money to in the end be a fall guy for their puppet master as useful idiots and, and it's it's sad to me when when these things occur because um, you know they're just buying into these concepts and in the end what do they actually get as their reward um, other than redistribution in a hurry well I see that activity ramping up though I mean the more that we continue to pound and hammer this uh, global governance structure under the human trafficking banking schematic uh, the more we see agents coming in to tote the line and you see this happened just uh, Recently, again with me, I started posting back at a, a blog that I actually found Rocco on called Sovereign Warriors, which should be called uh, Citizen Slaves that are trapped in consensus reality because this is controlled opposition all the way. I mean, these people are promoting things like... Uh, uh, Joanna Johnson seminars on how to file your A, uh, your A for V's and UCC's and we know that the UCC is just a deposit slip for the holding corporation so you're underwriting your own enslavement by, by, by doing these nonsensical things and uh, you know when I was bringing I was bringing these things to light uh, and I was just uh, I wasn't uh, being abusive in language. Uh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, but you were showing the truth at them, and the truth hurt. Oh my gosh! So Jaro, the guy that uh, runs this uh, controlled opposition site called Sovereign Warriors, 
uh, the first thing he tried to do is minimize me and, and invoke title, you know, calling me moron and, uh, you know, toting the line, saying we, we got to get our republic back and, uh, you know, you got to be a secured party creditor and... And I pointed out over and over again how this stuff is just, you know, more ways to sell you down the road as a, a corporate slave to the federal state. As a CIA production. And you keep teaching those things. And then all of a sudden here comes somebody from and one of the agencies. And what happened? He removed you from that side. But that's what yeah, it says. I've been banned from that site right. now as of uh, early this morning, I discovered. And it was so, it was profound because this is exactly what it says in book four of the church committee reports as to what the CIA produces. They make these sites so that people come along and, and be pulled in and sucked in. And then they let the citizens all have a little say and everything else. But there's always that director there. And always these agents. And when you become a risk, they're going to vilify you and do whatever they can to uh, pull back the control of the consensus reality. And that's what occurred this morning. And it was very profound to see that, you know, you had scared him that much that he had to ban you instead of attempting to combat the truth, uh, which he did not do. He just got rid of you really quickly. Out of sight, out of mind, which is what, like, those little monkeys do. Well, I was starting to garner some people that were taking to heart what I was saying. And um, the, I guess, you know, the thought-provoking truth that I presented actually got to some real people there, and they started considering things, and he didn't like that. No. I wish I would have saved more screenshots of just the abusive nature of this moderator uh, trying to minimalize me. Uh, I didn't save too much of that, but uh, I, I, I got enough evidence to know what I know, and that's all that really matters because um, <laughs> it's it's just Everybody's so evident with what Walter Buren presented about, you know, 800,000 people on the pay, federal payroll with no uh, job titles as of that was circa 2008, 2009. Who knows what it's up to? Now, right. it's got to be well over a million, though. Right. But you are so outside of policy and agenda that, you know, he, he cut his losses this morning, which is funny. We'll see how that works out for him. Well, he has the fee schedule, so when we handle humanity's larger problems, uh, if the handlers hasn't taken care of the situation, we'll... Uh, readdress it um, when um, time is uh, provided. Good. So I said I was going to do some news, but um, Hillary Clinton's hard choices turned down for sale in China. I thought that was interesting. Um, Hillary Clinton's new memoir, Hard Choices, has been denied translation and English language distribution in China. Her publisher, Simon & Schuster, told NBC News on Friday. A day after the book hit shelves in the U.S., Shanghai Book Traders, which supplies foreign books to Amazon China, told executives at Simon & Schuster that the title would not be approved for sale in the country. It's interesting to see. Yeah, so her, her book is flopped, okay? Everything about all the information they've been putting out, her, they've been putting out on her is just turning into a huge disaster for any potential uh, 2016 run she might have. But who knows with the voting machine apparatus. I mean, hopefully we don't have to go into 2016 with, you know, this confederacy still lingering on, but we'll see what happens. Um, the uh, On the flip side of the coin, though, Bruce Springsteen's book is doing great, getting rave reviews. Oh, I didn't see that one. What is it? <laughs> Just as a I don't know, just uh, as a tongue-in-cheek, uh, you know, other uh, view at uh, some some book sales, you know. So pe people are more interested in Bruce Springsteen right now than Hillary Clinton, I guess, is the just of what I was 
taking from that. I mean, Rob Ford took uh, precedence over uh, Obama just a few months ago. I mean, uh, he had more hits and. Obama was more popular than. I mean, um, Ford, Ford was yeah. more popular than Obama, yeah, a few months back. Interesting. And he was the crack smoking mayor from Canada that just uh, raked him over the coals and uh, several articles that I read about him. Absolutely. They uh, allowed him to engage. And his own political cannibalism because they were offering benefits at the same time. He took it, but it, it, it was sad to watch. It was really sad to watch. The psychiatrist came right in there to diagnose him. Hopefully others can learn from from what occurred. Um, uh, there's the swatification going on, and uh, there's... Uh, some stories out there right now about how uh, SWAT is claiming to be a private uh, corporation with immunity. All right, and the reason for this, folks, okay, listen to what I'm saying here. The reason for this is because as a citizen patronizing your master, the federal state, in whatever manner, being a citizen, okay, by the evidence, opening your mail, accepting the franchise last name, registering the vote, all these things that evidence yourself as a citizen, aka plebeian, and and I don't mean to be uh, you, you know derogatory. I'm just telling you how it is. But as you have evidence yourself to be patriotic to that system that excludes you from holding them accountable under the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. See, the federal state has always claimed to have sovereign immunity, but they do not because they're not a, a sovereign state. They are a foreign state by all the evidence. They're just claiming to be a sovereign state you continue to patronize them, can't hold them accountable. And so here we have the uh, the same situation going on with SWAT, all right, under the restricted principle of sovereign immunity. If you harm a human being, you can be held accountable. So in order to hold SWAT or the federal state or anybody accountable completely and absolutely as in with the cure not just some federally state issued remedy you have to withdraw yourself as corporate stock from the House of Representatives that are representing you uh, they're you know trustee by default they're your executor executor de Centaur they're coming in to protect you from yourself. That, that I think that's the most horrifying to me is the aspect of, you know, running through a stop sign, rolling through a red light, uh, DUI, other thought crimes, conspiracy to commit, thinking about it, and all of these things are charging your estates and saying that they're protecting you. So you got a speeding ticket because it's protecting you from yourself. You you've never harmed anybody. Just in case you're gonna harm somebody, they're charging you. Just in case it, it, that that wasn't under uh, any of your presumptions, right? I mean, when you took up constitutional theory. Um, as your constitution, this thing that fills you up, did you ever consider that as a farm animal you'd be charged for thinking about it without any intent to harm? And that's what we're dealing with here, folks. This is Nazi Germany all over again. It's always been the same farm. It's always been the same Rome. Um, the same Rome that colonized, a colony means landed farm or estate. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And you're the same Spartan citizens 
that are throwing yourself on the edges of swords so that you can die for your country. Yeah, I was watching that, um, the uh, new 300 that came out. I, I really it had a new twist. But, you know, the, the, the original concepts of all of these Spartan things and all of those demigods and everything else, they were incorporated into a bunch of fictions written by Homer and Hesiod and a few others. Galen was, was integral in, in um, establishing the psychological and linguistic construct of Babylonian theory. But you've got all of these fictional tales and then attorneys. Attorneys are interpreting that for you. There's eight volumes on the history of Greece written by, first started out, uh, I know one of them was George Crowe, Esquire, of course. And he interpreted Greece, or the history of Greece, from fictional tales. The Iliad and the uh, Odyssey are fictions. So wrap your mind around that one, because you've been sold everything, including that you had forefathers, and those are concepts too. Washington means the state of a, a man named Wasso. That means that they're saying this is the vassal's estate, and through trick and deception, we're going to hold on to it for him. And they said that when they said they seceded your estate. Secession means to take over because you're dead. They declared you civilly dead in the Declaration of Independence. Independent meaning not opposite of a dependent state. And so while they're holding on to your estates for you as a trustee, they're saying that you might hurt yourself, so they're going to ticket you for rolling through a stop sign. Or maybe graffiti, or whatever else commercial crime out there. You know, it's just, it's profound that somebody can come into my places and say, you know, I'm very offended that you call me an animal. Okay, don't act like a farm animal. I will stop saying these things when you stop acting as farm animals. And, and Bo, he'll stop hurting people with the truth. He beat the heck out of that guy with the truth. And he'll stop doing that if you guys stop acting as farm animals. Our entire yeah. purpose, our obligation, is to be here doing this. Because there's nobody else that's saving humanity. Humanity has like got this big fat pacifier in its mouth, and it, it won't let it go. Yeah, I could, I'd just like to say, quit buying those concepts. Uh, secured party creditor, UCC filing nonsense. A UCC one is is filled out by the sheriff, okay, to put an individual into the holding corporation. That's how they're able to sell the surety bonds to the attorneys. All right. That's an assurance. The docking instrument only gives you a receipt called a certificate of birth. And not only people buying the concepts, you're also paying outrageous amounts of money to go to these seminars that teach you how to fill out government paperwork uh, to try to get free, which is ridiculous on its face. How can you fill out any of their forms and get out of their system. None of them are de designed that way. Even when you fill out the official forms for expatriation. They'd say right on them that you'll be taxed for the next eight years. You'll be audited. Just in case you're trying to escape the taxes. Hello? What the hell is that one? What the heck is that one? And, and, if that's not bad enough... If you're expatriated and you do not have a government, in the 1929 Geneva Convention, the corporation says if you don't have a government, they will pick you up and put you in the holding corporation and save you from yourself. That's how you got there in the first place. You did not patronize yourself. You called something else your father. You didn't patronize your house. 
You called something else your house, and you live there as res, things. Res is defined, Black's Law Dictionary is a thing or object. <coughs> well, one other point uh, to make, just to drive this home, okay, like uh, many of the gurus out there promote uh, the uh, commerce aspect of the court, all right. Well, what's that under? What does Tammy and I talk about over and over and over again? Private acts and acts of commerce. Okay. So how, you know, can you even get close to being uh, sovereign? Okay. Which I don't like that term on its own because what we came in as was a sovereign state. It's a lower case S as in state of being. All right. That's how we were able to gain access to the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity not by filling out some crazy you know nonsensical uh, uh, UCC that uh, is used to dump you into the holding corporation as a prisoner of war right the, U the uniform commercial code stems from the negotiable instruments act the negotiable instrument act came from the law merchant itself and it grew into the Uniform Commercial Code Act. Okay, for all of you thinkers out there that you can even consider that you're a sovereign state, a foreign state is defined under 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603 as one being a corporation facilitating business acts of commerce and private acts uniform commercial code is all one big private act commercial and private act it's what it does it negotiates human beings up until now many of you float by for uh, three or four years after you do some of these things uh, but after that, uh, the federal state catches up with you, and they're going to come after you. Well, and they don't really have to chase. They know where they're going to be, too. So it's they wait the time so that the mind forgets about these things, like the Gunhausen Charter says. Now, uh, I also take a lot of heat, seemingly less than I used to before, though, which is good to see. But uh, a lot of people still have a problem considering these uh, founding fathers as they're called to be attorneys now Jesus said we're only known by works and action so let's don't look at their titles just right off the bat let's look at what the founding fathers did they came in and declared us to be an independent state in the Declaration of Independence they issued us by shaking their own hands amongst themselves the Bill of Rights, we were granted by that federal state, but first, in order to get those rights granted to us, they had to take them by consent in the first place. And then they came out and filled us up with this Constitution, reiterated those rights they were granting, and uh, it's filled with articles that are articles of incorporation, articles of association, which gives you the business model. You can clearly see the Commerce Clause coming into play as their main modus operandi. The Commerce Clause allows them to engage in these private acts and acts of commerce. Again, you can't hold them accountable under the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity if you're laying down to that. And that's what law means. Law means to lay down. The lawmakers came and said, here's how we're going to administer you. All right. And they turned you over to the Lord God, which, of course, they made themselves, to be themselves. And uh, that's the action of a tournament. Now, going to look at the physical evidence, let's go look at the uh, Treaty of Peace. And there's that word again, peace, that you were talking about. Uh, well, wait a minute, that, that was called the Treaty of Peace in Paris? Uh, Versailles. Uh, Peace with Spain. 1794, it was in Paris. Uh, Franklin and 
uh, Adams and uh, Jefferson went over to sign that thing. Remember? 1794, I believe. Uh, I'll let you look that up for a moment. But when you look on the actual document, the, uh, the signatures from Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin were all in caps. They wrote everything in capitalization as their, as their signatures and wrote ESQ, Esquire, behind that. That's a title of nobility. They were claiming. They were claiming these titles. And you can see this if you pull up the actual uh, photocopy PDF of the uh, uh, Treaty of Peace is what it was nicknamed. Okay, Paris. And um, so, I mean, you have some physical evidence that they're in the action of a tournament. All right, all the, the documents aforementioned are physical evidence. And uh, let's see. Uh, all right, well, let's come back to that uh, if you can't find it right this moment. We can cover that on another show. We have covered it before, I know, as I remember looking at that. Uh, what else can you offer as uh, evidence that these founding fathers were nothing but a group of attorneys? Everything, every action, every treaty, um, all of them. I'm not, I'm just not remembering that one. 1783, maybe? Are you talking about maybe we were off one day? Could be. Yeah, Paris Treaty. Uh, Paris Peace Treaty of September 30th, 1783. Let's see. Go down the bottom and see who signed it. Uh, D. Hartley, John Adams, B. Franklin, and John. J with their seals and it's um, very interesting to see those things and not just that I mean if I'll go back and read this and then we'll cover it next week but uh, you know we've got all of the treaties are packs they're all for peace this mutual voyage if you want to call it that or League of Nations, if you want to call it that, the United Nations Congress, the Confederated State, <coughs> they're all the same thing. And again, peace stems from the word Pax, P-A-X, meaning pact or agreement. And all they are is handshake deals on how to human traffic. That's all it's ever been. And, and um, I'll update my data banks. <laughs> With that one, I don't know why I forgot about it, but um, at one point, you know, Jeff had me memorize pretty much all of them. Um, it's just been an interesting journey. It's it's been something else. But these these agreements, you know, the, one of the most horrifying was when they started betting on all of the productive value of humanity in the 1953 mutual defense agreements with the Republic of Korea you mean right right that, that's the 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 one that horrifies me the most outside of the master lend lease agreement itself that Churchill and Roosevelt entered into um, in the action of what was coined Malthusian theory the the nature of rent um, years ago and um, of course that Atlanta Charter that allowed it to be perpetrated globally um, as per the majority that was in the House and Senate that's what it means when the people choose their own form of government it depends on if the Republicans are the majority of the House or the Democrats are the majority of the House and that's all it depends on and um, you'll see the you know, if they have a Republican majority, they'll be promoting uh, constitutional theory and all that. And then if they have a majority of Democrats in the House, of course they're going to promote democracy, which 
stems from the words demo meaning people and kratos meaning to control or possess and it's all the same thing it's all exactly the same thing and and that's where the accountability comes in under the shipping statutes because um under shipping 46 usc you know if they bring forth liens on public vessels they're voluntarily assuming those charges if they get caught. And so all of the sheriffs out there, you know, you're sitting on these indemnification bonds, but you are not the party responsible for calling out those liens on the public vessels. The corporate counsel is, and the judge is authorizing that. They're responsible for, for charging. Um, you know, I've never seen a law enforcement agency, uh, you know, facilitate the court process or, or act as corporate counsel or the conservator of a bankrupt entity. Um, for example, Scott Key Summers. And um, those are the folks that not only are perpetrating these things, but they're lawyers. They are attorneys. And they know the law. They know the risks. And that is what the game is. They created the SWAT uh, organizations through legislation and lawmaking and policy. Right. But they know what the game is. And that's why they bet on these cases. That's what they're playing is the stock market. And the risk is created by the actuality that at some point they're going to get caught otherwise there's no there's no risk and um you know now is that time sadly uh and we're we're watching it play out as as these uh folks are being rounded up and and shoveled off into the holding corporations yeah yeah we're seeing it uh, on a massive scale like never before, uh, you know, of course you have the gatekeepers that are toting the line, that uh, Which is keeping sad. you from not seeing that information, you know, they're still calling Russia, Russia, they're still calling uh, uh, North Korea, North Korea, and such. Kind of. Instead in, of what it is. In Massachusetts, they came in and said that this SWAT um, was a... Um, incorporated body and mainstream media the other day which was interesting to see um you know it's uh it's very interesting that you know th there's not the old jesus on the cross and from all appearances in the evidence thus far it appears like the new Jesus that's on the cross is crying out because it's lost its daddy, it's forsaken. And, um, you know, it brings me such uh, comfort and um, it's beautiful on one hand, but on the other to watch the useful idiot go by way of the wayside is, is, is very sad to watch um, because you picked up another daddy and you, you re relied on it. But you know what? All humanity was within the crucifixion. And so we already experienced all these things. I think that's what's making me so sad is that we've walked all throughout our lives as Job and we patronize this or this or this or this. And it ends up biting us in the butt or, or harming us in some way. And that's how we learned uh, not to patronize it. Yeah, I wonder what's uh, going on with the Pope now. Pope is... Uh had to cancel three engagements, I guess, so far due to um, some kind of health matters. Uh, of course, he's 77. I mean, right. I guess that's going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe he's just kind of sick to the stomach with everything going on. <laughs> it doesn't feel good right now. Be well, everybody. We'll be back. Oh, next week, Bo will be back on the Bone Rocker Show Wednesday night right here on Studio A, freedomslips.com. Be well, everybody. I might have to have you fill in for the first part of that. Okay, we'll see.